Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be restoring this River Rossi 080 steam locomotive. I picked this uh, locomotive up at uh, Larkspur Line train store during their Boxing Day to New Year's sale. And uh, I think I got it for about 15 Canadian dollars, and then I got 30% off of that, so I probably only paid like 13 bucks for the thing. Uh, which doesn't seem like too bad a price, but uh, as I remember, this thing does not run, it is seized. Uh, having said that, we were hearing some stuff from the motor, so uh, hopefully the motor works and uh, we'll be able to get this thing running. Because uh, these old River Rossies, they're maybe not the most reliable because most of them out there are uh, a little higher uh, in age than others, but they were very, very well built, especially the River Rossi motors. Um, the guy who started River Rossi was very adamant that River Rossi make good motors uh, that span at uh, similar RPMs. That way the locomotives could be uh, double or triple headed and stuff like that. And as a result, they've lasted a really long time. A lot of them have ball bearings in the motors. So they're very good motors. And that's why a lot of River Rossi engines uh, have uh, working motors after all these years. They were the best three pole motors uh, ever made for the time, in my opinion. They might be the best three-pole motors ever made uh, by all time. I mean, five poles have more torque, but these are very good motors. So, uh, yeah, we're going to try to test this thing. Again, as I said earlier, I don't think it runs, but, yeah, we'll take it over the track, try to give it some power, and then we'll try disassembling it to, you know, figure out what exactly is going on with it. Let's get started. All right, so I've gone ahead and set the locomotive on the track, and uh, unfortunately I noticed something, which is that uh, this locomotive, uh, there's supposed to be a little crossbar here that connects the locomotive to the tender uh, for it to get power. Uh, unfortunately, it seems to be gone on this particular locomotive, so I've got this little wire, and we're just gonna try to connect live feeds to the terminal. So we're gonna put uh, about eight volts of power in the uh, track right here. And then I'm just gonna take our little wire and we're just gonna try tapping it against each of the leads. And when I do that, get a short. If I do this, I'm not sure if you can hear that, but the motor something, we'll try giving it a little bit more power. We got a working light, but it's not moving. Sometimes uh, changing the direction can get a locomotive moving. Yeah, it's not doing much. In fact, it's shorting now. So uh, yeah, this thing uh, definitely is something wrong with it. If a uh, locomotive is humming like that, it means it's getting power, but unfortunately uh, this one seems to be seized. So there's either old lubricants preventing this thing from running or dirt in the gearbox. A whole variety of things could be wrong with it, but we can only uh, find out by taking it apart. So let's get to that. So to begin, we're just gonna start by taking out this screw uh, right at the front here. Um, and this, I believe, holds the shell on, so we can remove that. Now, I can't remember what we have to do next here. I've got that kind of a part. Let me look this over. Okay, so I've looked it over a little bit. I think this uh, area right here, I think I need to take out these four screws. So I'm just going to do that. Frankly, we're going to have to probably take that out either way. So even if this is the wrong step, um, it doesn't really matter as far as I'm concerned. Because we're going to be pretty much disassembling this. You know, we're going to disassemble this locomotive either way. Okay, well, uh, it worked. Um, the motor is now unseated. Uh, so yeah, we've got these two parts separated and we can learn a lot from having the motor uh, separated from the rest of it because we can find out, first of all, if the motor is seized, uh, but also if the gearbox is seized. And I can tell right here, um, just by turning this with my hand, uh, this is a lot stiffer than it should be. So my guess is gonna be it is turning. It just has, I think, really old lubricant in it. So we're gonna open this up and see what kind of nightmares lay inside for us. Hmm, that will be fun. Well, it will be interesting. That's one thing you can say when uh, you open up something that hasn't been run probably for a really long time. You never know what you're gonna find. And well, that's part of the excitement, at least as far as I'm concerned. 
Okay, so we got that off. Let's try to take this more rusty screw out. All right, we almost got the last screw out. There it is. Okay, let's see what uh, nightmares await us. Okay, um, yeah, that's not the worst I've seen, actually. Let's take this, okay, yeah, that's actually, that's pretty, let me give you guys a close-up shot of this. Yeah, so when a locomotive like this has been sitting for a while, sometimes the grease can get uh, kind of old and dried and really tacky, sort of, and yeah, it's done exactly that. So we'll have to clean all that out. Yeah, it needs to be. Weird. Look how dirty this thing is in the light too. This all needs to be washed. Yeah, so there's just a little bit of old grease and dirt uh, in there, but uh, now that we've got the worm gear out, we can see even with all that, this is still turning fine, and the wheels are still quarters. So uh, yeah, that's good. So I'm gonna take this apart, and then we're gonna we're gonna really scrub this whole thing down because this is just really dirty. I don't know. It looks like it has like flakes of paint or something on it. I'm pretty sure I did find this in a bin full of all sorts of other stuff, so it's uh, certainly not inconceivable that uh, maybe paint from other locomotives came off onto it. I have no idea how long it was in that bin for, but uh, I'd suspect a very long time because uh, the guy who runs that hobby shop, uh, I believe, got that bin in an estate, and we don't know how long ago that I think that the estate that he got it from happened several years ago. Like, uh, I don't know, maybe five or so. Um, and uh, then on top of that, we don't know how long it might have been in that bin prior to the estate. So, as far as we know, this thing might not have ever been run in, I don't know, 20 years. I mean, who, who knows how long it's been broken for? Be interesting. It's too bad there wasn't a way to tell when this was last run. Ah. Huh. Okay, that's really weird. So it was really dirty on the top, but the bottom, all the bearings are spotless. I mean, I'm still gonna take all the rest of it out because, you know, the rest of it needs to get cleaned, but that's uh, very odd. All right, so we've got all these parts out here. So we're now gonna take all the parts that need to be cleaned upstairs and I'm gonna rinse them all off because this is just, I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, it's going to take uh, at least a bit of water, more than just a lot of rubbing alcohol to clean this one off. So, uh, yeah, let's get to that. All right, so we're now gonna reassemble our little uh, worm gear here. As you can see, it came out uh, quite a bit cleaner uh, than it went in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, put this little um, metal ring around. This acts as almost like a bearing between the bearings, uh, if that makes any sense. And then I uh, got another one, it's right there. there. I'll put a little bit of oil and you can really see I'm not putting much here. That's about all you need. A tiny bit of oil on there. And uh, yeah, there we go. So uh, that's all you need to do, really. We're gonna put some uh, grease oil mix on this part later, but for now, that's uh, that's all good. And generally, you wanna keep uh, model railroad stuff and steel wool separate since the little fibers can get stuck in the magnets of the motor and get caught on the commutator. They can wreak all sorts of havoc, basically, with model trains. But uh, in this case, I'm going to 
use a hair dryer basically to clean off uh, the little particles that come off of this. And uh, we need to get rid of this rust somehow. So uh, yeah, we'll uh, clean that up and then it will uh, be ready to be put back inside there. All right, so now that we've got uh, these two parts clean, we're gonna start reassembling this whole thing. We're just gonna hold this up here. Um, I believe this is how it went on, which is where, uh, let's see the connecting points right there. I think this is how it all went. Trial and error, that's how we'll figure it out. Okay, I think everything is in. Well, we have it in this state. Let's secure it by putting this plate back on. Got this all back together and oiled and uh, eh, seems to be turning over pretty well. So we got all that fixed up. So we're now going to put the uh, worm gear back in place. So to do so, we're just gonna pop it in like so. Uh, we're gonna make a grease oil mix to put on the worm gear, which will uh, suit it, I think, uh, pretty well. So we're gonna use uh, Labelle 102 and Labelle 106. And uh, we'll just mix them on top of this container. So we're gonna put a moderate sized drop of the Labelle 106. Then we're gonna put three times that amount in oil. And then we're gonna take this uh, little pick here and we're just going to uh, mix them all together. Uh, until they're uh, one and then we'll just put that on top of the worm gear you know it will uh, it will be thick enough to lubricate the worm gear properly because the worm gear it needs something uh, a little bit thicker than just regular oil to keep it all lubricated okay now we just need to put the uh, top back on this, and then we can uh, start uh, playing around with the motor. Although I'd, uh, I'd suspect it's not going to give us any problems. Alright, so we're now going to test our uh, little motor here. And uh, I've got with me some uh, leads hooked to a Tyco controller. Plenty of spark, as you can see. And now, let's see if our motor works. Hmm. Jammed. I wonder if there's like a piece of something in the gearbox. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've just found our problem. Let me show you all of you. So what we seem to have right here is something jammed right in the motor. You can see uh, part of one of the poles pushing up against it. And if I turn this, you can see it's hitting that. So if we, there it is. Looks like part of the locomotive. I don't know what it was doing in there, but uh, let's uh, see how the screws are sticking to the magnets. Will it turn now? Uh, it doesn't seem very happy to. Let's try giving it some power. Might be able to turn over. This thing definitely needs to be lubricated, though. Yeah. Okay, twice the charm. Yeah, River Rossi. Uh, this thing's running beautifully without the oil. Listen to that. Oh, that is good. <laughs> These old River Aussie motors, I swear, they they don't give up the ghost without a good fight. Um, and uh, we're going to put a bit of oil in there. Put some here. And a bit in there. Let's let it run, uh, let that oil get in the bearings and then we can put it back in. So that I assume was why this thing was seized, but uh, it definitely didn't fry it. The coils too, like they're in beautiful condition. I have to show you guys these coils. These are just like really good coils. So usually when uh, I open these old uh, River Rossi motors up, the coils are kind of old and decrepit looking uh, just from many years of use. You know, sometimes they've overheated or they're slightly shorted. Um, but these ones are just in beautiful condition, which means that uh, whoever had this thing 
uh, when it seized, didn't force it to run, because usually when a locomotive is seized, people try to force it to run, and it winds up uh, burning out one of the coils, but uh, luckily the original owner uh, never did that, so they're all in really good shape, which is, I think, why this motor is uh, so strong. So I'm going to let this thing kind of break in with more oil, and then we'll let it running. Uh, oh, commutator looks clean, too. That's amazing, you know, this is not a clean locomotive, but uh, the motor is in really good condition. I don't think I've ever seen one this good before. So I'm now running this motor on the most minimal power setting, and it's still turning over just absolutely beautifully. So uh, I'm really interested to see how this old River Rossi is going to run, because again, I've never seen a River Rossi motor in such good condition. Like, this is the lowest power setting, and it's turning over at, uh, like, a... a Pretty decent RPM. It is a three pole, so you know it's not uncommon for them to turn over higher. But uh, like this is very good for the lowest power setting. So yeah, cafe excellence. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's uh, let's get this thing back inside there and uh, see. You know, let's reassemble this thing and see how it runs. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put this little piece of metal uh, right here um, on this piece. And then we'll just put these two uh, screws in. All right, so we're now going to uh, put this piece right over top of here. Because I believe this is how we're supposed to do it. Um, yeah, this should probably go on first, though. So we can get that on. And now... Okay, we've got that in there now. We'll just start putting in some of the, uh, actually those are not the motor mounting screws. It's these little devils. Yeah, so I'll get those in and then we can take this thing over to the track to test her. All right, we've got her all back together. Let's go take her to the track and see if she runs. I really hope it does. That motor gives me so much confidence. Yeah. All right, so we've got her set up on the track. We've got power going to the track. Now, let's see. I can't remember which terminal it was. I think it's this one. Nope. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We've got a runner. Let's see if I can, uh, if I can get this wire kind of, like, if I could tie it around there and then get, like, a truck, we might be able to get this to work. Well, certainly I've got, uh, something in this bin that would, uh, work as, uh, that type of part. This maybe. Don't know which way it goes. Right on. <laughs> All right, uh, we're gonna have to figure out which way uh, we need to hook this up, but we can see the wheels pretty clearly, so that's good. Now, all we need to do is set that up, and let's see if I got it the right way. Nope. Let's try it backwards here. That's right. Okay, let me tie this on and we'll uh, try testing it. All right, we've got her all tied on, so let's uh, try giving her some power here. Yeah, look at that. What a runner. Well, it was running. I think the bridge is dirty. I need to clean that up a bit. But uh, it is running nonetheless. Oh, that doesn't sound good. I don't know what's going on. Seized. It's running perfectly. That doesn't feel right about it there. Not entirely sure what caused that, but uh, she seems to be running again. I just threw her in reverse, put it back forward, and uh, whatever it is seems to have worked its way out of its system. So, uh, yeah. It's running just fine. Ah, I love these old River Rossi engines. They take uh, quite a bit to give up the ghost. Even with that, uh, they just kind of keep on rolling.
Well, folks, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. I'm really happy with the results of this restoration. We got this engine, which was completely seized, running again. So I'm very happy about that. Anyways, with that, I want to thank you all so much for watching.